Hello everyone. Welcome to Git tutorial. In previous video, we discussed how to create GitHub account and how to create a repository in GitHub account. In this video, I will discuss how to create a repository, what is a public repository, what is a private repository, and how to clone the code and how to pull the code. What is the difference between clone and pull? First, let me show you how to create a repository and then let me explain you what is private and public repositories. I logged into my GitHub account. In last video, I created this repository. Now, let me create another repository. So, to create new repository in GitHub, we have to go here. Just select this option, new repository. I'm selecting this, then name the repository. Here I'm going to give it as second repository. It is a valid repository. While creating a repository in our GitHub account, we have to make sure that this repository name is not duplicated. It means this repository name should be unique in our GitHub account. After giving the repository name, we have one field here called as description. This is optional field. If you want to write any description about this repository, then you can write it. As of now, I'm not giving anything. Then we have to specify this repository is a public repository or a private repository. What is meant by public and private repositories? If it is a public repository, it means that anyone can see this repository and you no need to be an authenticated or authorized user to this GitHub account, but you'll not be able to modify the code. But if you select it as a private repository, then you have to choose who has to see the code of this repository? Who has to modify the code of this repository? If you choose it as a public repository, then anyone can see the code or files present inside this repository. But to modify that, you have to give that user a proper access in your GitHub account. We will see that in further classes like how to create a user, how to give them proper access. As of now, for practicing purpose, I'm going to choose public repository. If I choose a private repository, then I have to select the proper users and give them proper access like read and update access. As of now, I'm not going to select this. I'm going to continue with public repository. And then as I don't want to create an empty repository, I'm going to initialize my repository with one of the readme file so that my repository will be created with one file. I'll explain these two things later. As of now, I'm going to click on this create repository. So a repository will be created for me. And in further classes, I'll discuss more about public and private repositories and their differences. And now my repository with the name second repository has created in my GitHub account. Where this repository resides inside my GitHub. Now I want to take this files, whatever I have created or whatever the files present inside this repository, I want to take that files into my local repository. For that, what I have to do is I have to clone this. So how to clone is there is a URL here. When you click on this clone or download option, it will show one URL. This URL is available in two types. Whatever we are seeing here, it is of HTTPS type. If you want SSH URL, if you click here, it will show that SSH URL. As of now, I'm going to continue with HTTPS URL. So if I click here, it is giving the HTTPS URL. Using this URL, I can take these files, whatever the files present here inside my GitHub repository, right? That I can get into my local system. So for that, what we have to do is we have to install something on our local machine because this URL is related to Git and GitHub. So to support this URL in my local, I need to have Git. For that, what you have to do is just type Git for Windows. You just Google it. So there is one URL, git-scm.com slash Windows. You just click on this. When you click on this URL, based on your Windows system configuration, whether it is 32-bit or 64-bit, it automatically starts downloading it's set up for Windows. Now, if it doesn't start automatically, you can click on this. My mission is 64 bit mission, so I'm going to click on this. So you will be able to see that 
a exe file is downloading here i already have this exe file so i am not going to download this now i already downloaded that git exe and install it as it is a exe file you just has to double click on it and then click on s and then next 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 and then finish that's it so that git will be installed on your local windows machine to check whether git is installed or not you just right click on your machine at any location see here on my desktop i'm just going to right click here i'll be able to see these two options git bash here git ui here if you are able to see these two options it means your git has installed successfully not only on desktop if you right click anywhere you will be able to see that option see here i'm getting into this folder I click here even here i am able to see these two options it means my git is installed properly next i am going to my github account click on this clone or download option copy this https url come here here i am going to create one folder like git practice get inside this if i right click here i will be able to see this git bash here option i am going to click on this whatever the url i copied here i am going to paste it here before that what i have to do is i have to use one of the command called as git clone and then paste that url what we copied so what is this git clone git clone is a git command by default our windows machine will not be able to identify this git commands that is the reason we installed git and we already know the use of git in previous video i explained what is git and how it maintains the version controlling system now i use this git clone command and gave the url what i copied from my github account if i type enter my git started cloning the files whatever there inside my repository see here i have one file readme.md see here if i type ls here the repository whatever i created here inside my github account that is available inside my local so to get inside this repository i just has to type cd as you type and then click on tab it automatically picks that repository name or else if you want to type you can type that repository name or that is nothing but a directory name here so now i am inside my repository if i type ls if i try to list ls is the command to list the files and directories so i am going to type ls here see here i have the readme file this is the file i had inside my repository the same file i have here now let me explain something about clone clone is the git command what we have to use to clone the code for the first time it means i am going to connect to this repository from my local machine for the first time then only i have to use this clone command see here inside this git practice from here only i open this git bash and then clone right see here this is the repository i got and then i got a readme.md file what is this dot git i'll explain later you understood right git clone has to be used only once when we are going to connect to the repository for the first time from our local mission now just think that one of the developers has created a new file here now i'm going to create a new file directly inside my github let me create one file create new file option i am going to choose i am going to name it as test.txt i am going to write inside this hello welcome to the tutorial then i am going to save it ah, here there is no option called as save there is something called as commit new file what is this commit i'll explain in next video i'll discuss about this commit in detail and now i'm just going to click on this commit new file so a file has been created here where i created this test.txt file inside my second repository which is there inside my github now i want to get this file into my local so how i'm doing is if i type ls i am not able to see that test.txt file if i want to get the latest changes from my github account to my local what we have to do is we just has to type git pull see here it will start pulling that file from my github repository to my local machine so if i type ls here 
will be able to see this s.txt. Now let me print the content present inside that s.txt. See here the data what I entered inside the text.txt inside my GitHub is now available on my local mission. Now let me do one more thing. I'll try to update this file. I'll click on this file. Here I am able to see one edit option. I'm going to click on this. I'll modify some text. I added some more text here. In next video, we will learn git add commit push commands. Now I'm going to commit this. For now, you just remember like commit is like a save, but it is something else that I'll discuss in our next video. I'm going to commit the changes. Now see here, my text.txt has this text. Right inside this repository, I have this text.txt and this has this text. Now, if I want to get this latest changes into my local mission again, what I have to do is I have to type git pull. So now it started pulling the changes again. See here, it is pulling the changes. Now, if I type ls, I'm able to see that file as it is. Now, if I type cat test.txt, I'm able to see the new text, what I updated inside my GitHub. This is how we pull the latest changes from GitHub to our local Git. Now you understood the difference between Git clone and Git pull, right? Git clone, we will use to clone the code for the first time from GitHub repository to our local repository. Git pull, we use to get the latest changes from GitHub repository to our local Git. Git clone will be used only once and Git pull is used to get the latest changes from GitHub to our local at any time. Now, let me explain it with a small flow diagram. See this, this is my GitHub account. Here, I can have multiple repositories. Now, I want to get the files present inside this repository to my local Git. So, this is my local Windows mission. I created a folder here. Here, I used a command called as git clone. This clone command I have to use for the first time. Whenever I clone the code, I will get the changes. What are all the files and changes present inside my GitHub repository to my local workspace. And a repository called .git will be created on my local. How we have a repository in our GitHub, right? Same like that. A repository called dot git will be created automatically on our local workspace. Let me show you this. See here from git practice, I have right clicked and opened a git bash and type the git clone command. Once I clone, a folder got created with the repository name. The same repository what I have inside my GitHub, right? The same has been created here. And inside this, all my files are there. And along with that, I'm able to see one folder called as dot git. This is nothing but a local repository. Why it got created? What is the use of this? I'll explain in next video. After cloning, few people may not be able to see this dot git repository because this is a hidden file. If you want to see this, what you have to do is right click here, get into properties, just hide this and save the changes. Then once again, you right click. Go to properties, remove this hidden, and then click on OK and then save the changes. That's it. After that, you will be able to see this dot get repository. Till now, we have seen how to configure Git on Windows. We searched like Git for Windows, then went to Git URL, downloaded a exe file, and then installed it. Right? And then we learned how to clone. Then we learned public and private repositories. Then we discussed git flow basics. I haven't discussed the git flow in detail. I'll discuss that in next video. Now let me show you something about public and private repositories. We all know that I created this second repository as a public repository. I'll take this URL. I'll go to some other browser. I'll hit the URL from here. See here, without login, Still, I'm able to see this repository files. Here, I'm going to see this. But this edit option is disabled. As it is a public repository, 
anyone without any authentication or authorization i am able to see the files and changes present inside them but i am not able to edit them so i am going back to my other browser where i have logged in here i am going to create another private repository let me create it i am going to click here new repository i am going to name it as my private repo so here i am going to select it as private repository as usual i don't want it to be a empty repository i am going to initialize this repository with one of the readme file and creating that repository see here this is a private repository right now i'll take this url i'll go to my other browser and hit this see here i haven't signed in yet that is the reason i am going to get 404 which is url not found even though if i sign in here with some username and password i will not be able to see the files present inside this repository it means i will not be able to access that repository why because as it is a private repository to access this for example if i am using a username called abc then in my github repository here for that abc user i have to give read permissions to update the changes i have to give write permissions how to create this users how to give permissions we will learn in further videos so far we learned how to clone the repository from github to our local and after cloning if any updations are made to my github repository we learn how to pull the latest changes from github to our local in next video we will learn it in reverse way if i create any file in my local repository or if i modify any file how to push the changes or files from my local to this github repository that's it for today's session in next session we will learn git add commit push and status commands thank you all stay tuned